victory is, a, uh, is attributed to Our Lady because of this rosary procession led by the Holy Father. Um, the success of the, uh, what was called then the, uh, the Holy League to hold back Muslim forces from overrunning Europe. Um, <laughs> history has a way of repeating itself. Um, the Muslim forces um, back in the 16th century were intolerant of any other religion or any other way but theirs. And the radical Muslim forces today are really the, they're the same way. They're intolerant. Um, you don't believe it, look at the countries where that radical Muslim rule is established. Um, Saudi Arabia, uh, for one, and there are others. They don't tolerate other religions. And if they gain power uh, and have a majority of um, uh, power in a the government, then they become totally intolerant. So th this is nothing new. Uh, in 1573, uh, Pope Gregory XIII changed the title of the, of the feast day to the Feast of the Holy Rosary, which we have today. But it was um, started out as Our Lady of Victory. Why? Because the victory of the Christian forces against the Muslim forces in, uh, in 1571 was attributed to the Blessed Mother through the prayer of the Rosary. Uh, this was a decisive time in history. Uh, the Catholic and Christian world was about to be taken over by the uh, Muslim forces, the, uh, the forces uh, of the Turkish uh, Navy. Our Lady of the Rosary is so important for us in so many ways. Um, the Rosary is a weapon. And if you don't think we're at war, I don't know where you've been. Uh, and I'm not talking about wars in Iraq or Afghanistan. Yes, those are wars. War against terrorism, yes, that is a war. But the real battle is not against flesh and blood, as St. Paul says. It's against principalities and powers. It's spiritual combat. And that, the outcome of that spiritual warfare, to a very large degree, will determine the outcome of the battle we see unfolding in time and space. Um, there has always been a battle between good and evil. From the moment darkness entered Eden, there's been a battle between good and evil, between truth and lies, light and darkness, life and death. And so it is today. Uh, you know, in the United States of America, we, uh, we, we have a raging battle. Uh, and I'll tell you this, uh, the most important battlefront, and now the media won't acknowledge this. The average American won't acknowledge this. But uh, the average American doesn't have a spiritual mind. Now, there's a nice controversial statement for you. That's a fact, though. They don't know their left hand from their right when it comes to spiritual things. The main battlefront is the battlefront of life. And you can't get around it. Listen, if you took all the important things uh, in society, and there are many of them, uh, taking care of the poor, the economy, um, health care. Uh, those are all important things, to be sure. But if you added them all together, if you put them all together, they're not as important as the battle for life. Listen, I'm going to ask you a question, a couple of them. Number one, do you think a country that has as its formal policy as a matter of law, the extermination of a class of human being, you think that, that that country can be pleasing to God? Do you think a country that's guilty of genocide, mass murder, do you think that country can be pleasing to God, no matter what else it does that's good? Can that country be pleasing to God? I don't think so. Uh, if we fall asleep on this one, if we allow lesser things to take precedence, and by lesser things I mean the economy. Uh, the economy is important, it's serious, I feel bad for people who suffer economically, but that is no, that's the reason that allows the economy is, it, that's an effect, a consequence of this country's abandonment of common sense, reason, and proper morality. 
Continue to murder innocent human beings through abortion, and you'll really see what happens to the economy. You think it's bad now? It'll crash and burn. This country will soon be unrecognizable. It'll be worse than a third world country. Why? You've made God your enemy. You can't make God your enemy and hope to prosper. And one of the best ways to make God our enemy is to murder his innocent little children. Now, this is in-your-face reality. Uh, it may sound harsh. It is harsh. It is harsh. The reality is harsh. And we are negligent and remiss in our pastoral responsibilities if we don't proclaim this from the rooftops. And so, pray to Our Lady of Victory. So many times throughout the history of the church, she has protected us. She has defended us. She has led the way to victory. Pray the rosary every day. Interiorize Jesus. Be filled with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you will be a powerful force to be reckoned with in this battle between the forces of life and death. We must do this one person at a time. Every one of us has to do our part. And if we do that, if enough of us pray and pray intensely, pray the rosary every day, if you do that, Our Lady of Victory will once again come through for us at a decisive moment in history. God love you, God bless you, and goodbye.